What's going on guys? Today I thought we would maybe go over uh, what you need in your pouches if you're an aspiring wood butcher. You know, all you gals and gents out there that want to want to touch wood all day and stuff. There's uh, some tools you're going to need. So first off is the pouches themselves. These are suspenders. This is an extra thing. You don't have to get those. I'd rather have it rest on my shoulders than my hips because a lot of times if you're wearing pants, you're wearing a belt. And then you got this tool belt. You got two belts rubbing on each other, just a little uncomfortable. But the pouches themselves, uh, it's okay to get a cheap set of pouches. The main concern is not having the nicest set of pouches. You're way more focused on just having somewhere to put your tools so you're not losing them around the job and running around like a chicken with your head cut off. So if you can afford it and you know you wanna be a carpenter, you know you're gonna be doing some building, um, I would get leather pouches. Leather is far better than the canvas material, but for just starting out, just go to Home Depot and get the cheapest pouches you can find. Uh, as long as you show up with pouches, I think they'll be fine with you. So, first we're going to go with the ham, or the tool, I'm sorry. The tool that everybody uh, thinks of when they think of a carpenter, a uh, hammer. This is just a 15 ounce S-wing. I wouldn't get anything over like 15 or 16 ounces because if it's lighter, you can swing it faster. And if you have a heavier hammer, it's gonna do more wear on your wrist and your elbow. A little tip for when you're swinging a hammer, if you guys haven't swung a hammer much, I see a lot of people when they first start, they're keeping their wrist stiff and they're moving only their elbow, okay? Look at, look at how much energy you have to put into every swing. I can hit it way harder by just flicking my wrist. If I flick my wrist and bounce my arm, I'm getting way more speed onto the head of that nail and it drives in so much faster. So you're using your wrist to swing the hammer and your elbow is just an extra leverage point. You don't want to always be using your elbow. All right, your next favorite tool tape measure okay I prefer the fat max because the band of this I don't even know what the hell you call this part the actual tape part is thicker so it can extend further out without bending I think fat max has kind of got a hold on the tape measure game right now uh, pencil quick little guy wouldn't hurt to bring them they'll most likely have some for you but that's just another step to being prepared uh, your speed square I actually don't love this speed square. This little thing pops out so you can draw longer lines, but I'm pretty positive it's not actually straight once you get to this hinge. So um, I'm gonna be getting rid of this guy soon. But you do want one that has the notches here so you can scribe easier and faster. Um, if you need more explanation on that, I have a video explaining the speed square. It's an incredibly useful tool. All right, so then we're gonna go to our knife. So most knives work. Um, if you're doing drywall specifically, you might wanna get a fixed blade, but other than that, I would probably not get a fixed blade. Most contractors, especially if you're working commercial, uh, they're not gonna want you to have a fixed blade unless you're a drywall guy. Next up is our chalk box. Typically, this would have a hook on it so you can hook it and pull it out and then snap. Um, mine broke because I'm pretty rough on my shit so I just have to uh, put a nail wherever I want it put that around the nail and I can pull and I can make a straight line 20 30 feet long all right so next we'll go with the chisel uh, mine is extremely beat up as far as the blade goes uh, it's nowhere near sharp enough to shave off hairs or cut me or any of that stuff uh, you can always sharpen this with a grinder. <laughs> not this is this is not a chisel that you are worried about using for precision use. This is more of one you're using as a wedge and to just take off chunks of wood in an efficient manner. So you can buy a cheap chisel and just continue to to sharpen it with a grinder and things. But just know that you don't want to take out a super nice chisel if you're framing. That's not you're going to destroy it and you're going to be pretty sad because chisels are expensive. All right, next we have our an extra nail stuck on the bottom of this. This is our little torpedo level. Uh, I prefer the little metal ones. I just The weight in your hand is easier to hold, easier to maneuver. 
and it can take a fall way better. All right, so next we have our nail bar. Now this is going to be used to pull nails or create gaps and use it as a lever. Uh, I'm not gonna go into great detail on that. You figure it out. Got there, bait some shit up. And then we have our 10 snips. So these are just yellows. If you're just framing, um, your yellows are fine. You don't need a set of red and greens. If you're doing more coil work, like wrapping stuff with aluminum coil and all that fun stuff, you're probably gonna want different snips than this, but show up with these on the first day, they'll be happy. And then we're gonna go to just a few extras. Now, you may not need these depending on where you go, but if you show up with these, your boss is gonna be impressed and uh, it's probably best to just show up with more tools than you need the first day and then kind of figure out what you're gonna use from there. So this is a nail set. If you're doing trim and you shoot the bread nailer and uh, one of your nails doesn't set all the way because you didn't push hard enough or for whatever reason, you can use this to beat the nail in, the smaller trim nails, so you don't have the giant head of your hammer indenting the wood. So this is a nail set. Then a bigger version of that is the trim, trim nail punch. Uh, this acts as more of a punch as you can see. You put the nail head in there and hit that down and uh, again it helps prevent huge indentions from your hammerhead on wood because when you're working around finished product, last thing you want, especially if you have a waffle head hammer, uh, last thing you want is a bunch of waffles on that finished product because then that piece is ruined it's going to come out. Your boss is going to be pissed. Don't do that. And then the handy dandy screwdriver. Just get whatever cheap one you can find that has a few different options. You definitely want a Phillips and a flathead. If you have a quarter inch driver in there and you know the 516 driver, that's great. Not a huge deal if you don't get one that has everything. Again, if you're doing remodel work, you'll definitely use this. If you're framing, probably not gonna use it a lot, but show up with more tools than you need. That way your boss is like, this guy cares. You know, this guy wants to do good work, you know? So I do think it's honorable to work for one contractor and you know, start at the bottom of the totem pole and go through the shit and work your way up the ladder. I also think it's extremely important to work for other contractors and get a plethora of experiences. I got so many different experiences and learning opportunities working not only in different situations but for different people. Um, it gives you a better understanding of how you should expect to be treated and what should be expected of you. But as a general rule of thumb, um, don't be afraid to jump ship if you're unhappy somewhere. Go try a different, different aspect of carpentry. Don't let one job or one shitty foreman ruin the trade for you. And uh, always try to come with your, to your boss with solutions and not problems. If when you come across an issue, if you use your brain to try and come up with a solution and bring that solution to your boss, um, a good boss will appreciate that because they want you to use your brain and they want you to advance your skills and really the only way you're going to advance your skills is if you start thinking for yourself and not being hand fed all the information. So anytime you're into a problem, try to come up with a solution and uh, bring it with the problem. That way you get your brain kind of working and working and uh, scrambling up how the idea should work, you know, just how my brain's and scrambled and I can't think of the words. Either way, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining along. Bye.